Has anyone had something happen to them that didn't expect in life? That's what happens in architectural practice. Because you're dealing with so many people and so many authorities and um, so many requirements and so many traits and so many processes um, that the likelihood that you'll come across a problem um, will happen and it's a matter of what you can do to minimise the problems that turn up. Risk is managed through trying to identify risks uh, before you start and then setting up a process to monitor those potential risks as they occur. So you, you should always consider as part of um, risk management, inclusions, we include this, and exclusions, we exclude this. If you don't start a job off with that, a clear understanding of what you're doing for your money, um, you can get caught. With insurances, um, you need insurance yourself, and you need to make sure everyone else has insurance. The problems I've come across are just a couple. Consultants um, will ask you to sign a form that limits their liability. What it does is it increases your liability and it can waive um, the cover that you have of your own professional indemnity insurance. You don't have to know all this. You just have to write it down, write insurance, know all the areas you have to check and go on and ask for advice. We do passive house, 10 star house. We now cost the job after the first meeting and we give the client a cost range from 6 star, 8 star, 10 star. It's easy to digest. It relates to quality of work, it relates to air tightness, it relates to insulation levels, and it relates to um, uh, a range of passive house, for example, technologies. So from a basic 6 star to an 8 star. And how we do that is we take, from the first briefing, before we sketch, we um, allocate areas against each room that they want or each space, plus uh, external works, plus local authorities, plus consultants, plus landscape. And we get window prices because window prices are varying from, like on the same job, we can get a price of 17 grand up to 90 grand, same project. So what you need to do with a consultant, you do need to help them understand what are you trying to do, if they're interested. So you need to have the right relationship. The second thing is, what is it that they need to do and do they know how to do it? Because consultants are like everyone in the world. They're all different skill levels. So if you're being asked to do something involving a lot of acoustics or complex data management or um, a sustainable design that's got no air conditioning, it's all managed with a BMS system, um, you need to source your consultants well. I like to choose experienced consultants and I then develop a relationship with them and stay with them. But I always have more than one consultant in case one can't help me out. So um, if you're getting into work that involves consultants and consultant coordination, you want them to look after you. So it's like anything. If you've got good people on the team, great. It doesn't mean things won't go wrong, but you do need to know that you need really good people to give you really good information. And the earlier or younger you are in the profession, the better quality information that, that you need. Um, that's about appropriate skill and experience. So it's again about relationship and knowing who to talk to. How is that risk management? Well, if you can't get the job approved, just stop. If, if there's no leverage or no way of getting assistance because you really do need to get the job approved, um, there's nothing you can do. So early on, get to know the people who matter, who can help you or not, and get to know how you might use that relationship over time. So as part of risk management, we try to get to know the people who may help us or hinder us. Um, as part of risk, specifying it correctly, um, we also have um, tender schedules uh, where we ask the girls to list everything trade by trade and we ask for a whole lot of other things. So during tender, there's an opportunity to get these in and compare them. So we, we compare joinery, painting, all those different prices across the tender, where it be over tender or, or select tender. And then we can see if there's an anomaly. So the prices might be similar, but there's anomalies. And so then we use that post-tender pre-contract period to review all the documents, all the specs. That's part of managing the risk of discrepancies in documents, because they do occur on every job. Oh, there's so much on contract admin. Um, 
contract admin is a uh, you need a lot of experience in my opinion to run contract admin well. You need to set up all the documents right, you need to have the right contract, you need to have the right post tender pre contract review. If you've got the right set of documents, the right set of knowledge, the right set of consultants, and you've got the right procurement system, you're a long way there. Talk to some other people if you start your practice early and you don't have experience in this realm. Don't start out. Just talk to builders and architects and get knowledgeable. Don't, don't do this work without experience or support. So shop drawings are enabling particularly steel work, mechanical services to be built, but there's a lot of risk in them and you do need um, to spend time and also have other people with experience to spend time reviewing them. So if it's steel work, you want the structural engineers to review them, you want the client to review them, and you review them. Sometimes we get a quality of the review as well. 